if you were going to make a list of the 10 best fish in the world, the list would be wrong if it didn't have lingcod on it. This is a lingcod out of the North Pacific. And Andrew Radulowski caught this fish. Yep. San Juan Islands. Sure. So when you get them in the boat, what do you like to do? So that, like the first part of cleaning a fish is you get them in the boat, you like to bleed them, right? Yeah, yeah, definitely. Get them in, a, I usually give them a little club, put them out of their misery, you know? Yeah. And then what you want to do is you take a knife and cut across the gill plates. And what that does is that bleeds that out and it, it kind of preserves the flesh in there. Sometimes you'll get, if you don't bleed them out, and all that blood would kind of redistribute through the flesh and you'll end up with, you know, kind of pinkish meat. Now, another thing he did here is we're talking about bleeding that fish by cutting his gills. And he also gutted it and removed the gills. What removing the gills does is there's a lot of bacteria mm -hmm. on the gills. So when a fish is going to start to spoil, he's usually going to start to spoil first in the guts, if you know, if he's not gutted properly, and he's going to start to spoil quickly around the gills. It's just like, it's just a bacteria rich environment. Just get rid of those gills, cut them all the way out. And he kind of saved the integrity of the head. The collar's still there. I got friends who are chefs. They won't accept the fish that doesn't have the collar on it. You know, they want the fish just like this. Everything there, minus gills, minus guts. So everyone likes to flay fish differently. I've done a how-to video on the same series where I do a rock fish. I grew up flaying fish by cutting the heads off. Andy likes to keep the head on. He's gonna go ahead and do this link cod how he likes to do it. And you're gonna walk us through the steps. Yeah, like I said, I like to keep the head on just as a, as a nice point to grab onto because sometimes when they're right out of the water, they can be a little slimy and slippery and they'll, they'll move all over your cutting board. Um, so what I like to do once this is like, I was saying that it's already gutted, you got the big open, open belly cavity here, take my knife and I run, there's this hard gill plate right there and I like to, to get as much flesh as I can and get all the way up and you get right down in there until you hit that spine like that. Oh yeah. And so now the trick with this cut is all about the angle. Because if your knife starts riding up like that, you're gonna cut right into that flesh. A sharp knife. But you, as you come pressure, down though, you're feeling that knife ride yeah. on that spine. And that's where yeah. that's you should where, feel the vert. You should actually like be feeling the vertebra going like click 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 yeah. click 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 click. And that's where like, experience comes in. You know, you just keep filleting fish one after another, and you, you start to feel it. So this is gonna ride right through. There's a set of rib rib bones right through there. So I actually kind of come through and you feel them pop like that. And so now I know once I get to about this section of the fish, I'm through that rib cage and it should just start sliding. See yep. that so right there? Right here, yeah. And so at this point, this is all about that angle. So you actually want to tilt that knife just down just a bit into, so you're riding right along that, that, that backbone spine and it just slides right yep. through. And I just keep it going all the way to the tail. That knife's right singing to me, man. Yep. It's singing to me, I love that sound. And look at that, that is one beautiful filet right there. See that? You just look at that thing, you know it's gonna taste good. And that's yeah. a bled fish. That's beauty. So this one, I'll flip him around real quick. And so I do the same thing on this side. Cut that, cut that meat right to the belly, come around here. And now this is where I kind of take a page out of your book, but I keep the head on. And yeah, once you start that like this, and the same is gonna be the same cut. So that same thing, I'm just riding that backbone all the way down and just keep it smooth to that. So uh, you generally like to package them skin on or skinned? You know, I usually leave the skin on because once I store it, I don't know what I'm gonna do with it. Yeah. It comes out of the freezer. I like to have the skin on when I'm, when I'm grilling it. You know, it kind of protects the protects the flesh a little bit on yeah. that high heat. If you're doing a high heat method, um, if you were baking or something where it's just going to be in the oven, you could take it off easy enough. Now we're going to leave one fillet skin on. It's better to freeze your fish skin on. Let's walk through skin and a fillet. You want to pull one skin off? Sure. sure. So what I like to do is I get back at this tail piece here. I always start from the tail, and it almost it's almost dialed in for you. So you can see the the white that little white ring so that's where the flesh ends and the skin starts so i just take it and make a little tiny insertion right here and you can see the angle that i'm at and i'm getting right down to the skin and once i get to that skin i kind of will change the angle of my knife and it's going to be almost like flame you want to run right along that skin and now i have this little flap see this here i'm just going to take and hold that and once you get enough of it you can grab hold of it and it nice sharp knife you, you just run your knife at that angle just right down the skin here and it just pops off just like this 
Nick, pair of cowboy boots yeah, out of that. You left no meat on there. That's just right off. And then boom. Yeah. Okay, so the final step here is, let's say you want to save some of this fish for later. For, for fish, I like to use vacuum bags a lot. You can't beat these vacuum bags. When I freeze stuff, I'm always kind of thinking like serving size. Yeah. For this guy, I want to go right in half and then freeze two halves per filet. And another good point about that too is keeping these whole when you're trying to, if you were to cook them whole, you know, this tail piece is going to be well overcooked by the time you yep. get through this. So it's, it is a, it's a good idea sometimes to cut them in half. Cook the thinner part yep. and the thick part separate. Yep. So, you know, let's say we're going to do this guy. He's nice and dry. So you don't got to worry about water leaking up into the bag. When you fill a bag, if I was to turn this piece of fish sideways and cram it down in there, I'm not allowing any air to escape from the bottom of the bag. So you see, I haven't overfilled my bag. So when I go to vac this thing, the air is going to come out. Leave yourself room. Don't overstuff your bags and center your product in the bag. Go over here. You know, follow the, you know, whatever your manufacturer's recommendations are for vacuum sealing. Lay it in there nice. That's it. Fish clean to 101.